Ecotech Marine, the exclusive sponsor of all my Coralfish 12G Magna 2015 videos. <laughs> Hi guys, it's George from Coralfish 12G and today I'm taking on and going to show you everything about MACTA 2015 in our nation's capital, Washington DC. The gates are about to open so I gotta go. If you watch my videos consistently, then you know that in order to go to an event like this, I gotta have my lucky pair of clownfish socks. Hi guys, I'm here with Thomas Brown from Thomas Vision Reef, and we're gonna talk a little bit about what's going on with his channel, and I know he's doing a lot of stuff with Salty Supply and how he's kind of blending those together. Um, so yeah, just what's okay. going on, Thomas? Well, man, well, with Thomas Vision Reef, Recently, nothing's been going on <laughs> because I've been doing so much for Salt Supply. Um, for those of you who don't know and who watch my channel, I've been doing videos every week for Salt Supply, and uh, so I haven't had time for Tommy Vision Reef. So um, now, what I'm going to do is kind of switch up Tommy Vision Reef, and this is kind of the first time I'm announcing it. I'm going to kind of switch to a kind of documentary style for everything. So even though you won't get videos every week from me um, on Tommy Vision Reef you at least get videos that are long. Right. You know, at least like 30 minutes long each time you get them. And so that hopefully will hold people over until the next time. Well, I think that's something that people like so much about Thomas's channel is the length and the quality of the videos is really rich. When you watch, it's almost like you're watching like a like a 30 minute or an hour long, I mean, they are documentaries. So this is my first Magna and Thomas has done a few now. So not just from kind of a cameraman angle, uh, in perspective, but also just as someone coming to Macna for the fun of it, to enjoy it, what are some tips you can give me and slash the viewers about Macna, how to go about doing it all? Well, the two really don't go hand in hand. Like when you come in to film Macna, like the first Macna I did um, was Macna Miami, and I did like over 50 interviews, which was crazy, but I didn't get to enjoy it. And right. Well, like after the show, uh, they had a few events, and I got to enjoy that. But the actual, like going to booth to booth, I really didn't get to enjoy it because I was trying to do so many videos, you know, for my audience. Uh, so the one thing I would say is, if you can, try to enjoy it. You know, try to enjoy it. You want to get your videos done, but also try to enjoy it. Um, if you're coming just to see it, same thing. Try to enjoy it. And the best way to enjoy it for me, I'm a little bit anal when it comes to be, like being organized. Make a schedule. If you have certain speakers you want to see, make sure you line it all up um, so you don't miss them. Because, you know, it's really a one-time event, and it's really, it's, this is like our NFL, you know, of the Aquarium right, Hobby. Yeah. This is our this Super Bowl, a, I guess I should say, of the Aquarium Hobby. Absolutely. We also have another big YouTuber in the house. Uh, he's actually being our cameraman right now, but Reefer Gill, why don't you come out and... Uh, Get in the video. Hello everyone, Reaper Gill here at MACNA 2015 in Washington DC. What a great venue this is. Opportunity to meet other YouTubers as well as some fans out on the floor. Uh, it's, a, it's a great event. It gets to see all the new stuff that's coming out with the companies and uh, it's a really enjoyable time. And awesome to meet uh, the both of you here. I'm here at the Ecotech Marine booth, and Ecotech is the official and exclusive sponsor of all my Coral Fish MACTA 2015 videos. So I'm here with Pat. Thanks for taking the time to talk to me. No problem. And he's going to tell you guys a little bit about the new Vectra pumps that just came out from Ecotech. All right. So the Vectra pump is our new introduction for the summer and for MACNA. We're really excited about it. We've got two models, the M1, the Vectra M1, and the Vectra L1. Now the M1 moves 2,000 gallons per hour and uh, can move 120, 21 feet ahead. 
and the L1 can move 3,100 gallons per hour and also 21 feet ahead. So the cool part about the Vectra pump uh, is not just that it you know, is very efficient, but also it's super quiet. It's got the quiet drive, just like the Vortec pumps right. got back in the spring. And so it actually will increase the ambient noise level of a, of a really quiet room by about half a decimal. So it's not only efficient and quiet, but it's also controllable. You can set up the schedules with your iPhone, Android, or the web, and basically set up a minimum speed and a maximum speed and calibrate your pump so that if the pump notices there's something wrong or if there's a blockage in flow, it'll actually push a SMS or, or in-app notification wow. to you. Yeah, so there's a lot of features and benefits into it. It also works with the battery backup. So um, if your power goes out, grab a battery backup. We've got a booster cable that you put onto it so it can go up to 36 volts and uh, should keep your, your sump flowing. And you can get your vector pumps pretty soon, right? Yeah, the M1 is available now and the L1 is available next week. Cool. We appreciate it and uh, it's great to meet you. And thanks for your time. Yeah, thanks a lot. Huge shout out to all my subscribers who came up to me and talked to me. I really enjoyed getting to know you guys and it really does mean the world to me when people come up to me and tell me they enjoy my content and have learned a lot from my videos. It was also great getting to see some younger kids who enjoy watching my videos. Guys, I see a lot of myself in you and I definitely want you to keep going with the hobby and get other kids involved like I'm trying to do. I'm Sam Lynch, I have an 85 gallon tank. My channel is Fish School and I really enjoyed hanging out with George today. Thanks, man. I'm with Paul from West Mariculture and they specialize in rock. And it's pretty funny, we were talking and um, I saw these bonsai trees that they're doing. And I asked him if he'd seen my zoantha tree by Tyler Bell video and he goes, that is almost kind of what blew up the business and really got a lot of exposure into people doing bonsai trees. Um, but these are actually a lot cooler than even what was shown in that video. So if you could talk to us a little bit about how that kind of expanded your business and, and how yours are a lot better slash different. When we first saw the uh, first saw the zoanthid video, uh, I actually got a bunch of uh, bunch of customers or potential customers that said, "Hey, can you build this for me? Can you make this for me? It's a great bonsai." And I was like, "Oh, I'll show you what a bonsai looks like." So I built a big bonsai and I threw it up on Facebook and. Within, uh, within about two days, I had seven to 800 likes. Wow. And I'm like, there's a concept. And so since right. then, we've been expanding and growing. And I tell you what, the uh, bonsai concept has gone, uh, it's big. It's going big. We're going to go global real soon with it. Uh, we'll take things that, you know, something that was a little, a small bonsai before now has lots of shelves, lots of structure. And this is actually one of our small ones. Our largest is 36 inches long, weighs 40 pounds. So anything from small to large. And what's beautiful is we have it so that the shelves are detachable, so you can move the corals around, frag on them, drill them, whatever you want to do with them. Uh, so it's, a, it's been a fun concept. It's, uh, it's become artwork. Awesome. Uh, it's, it's just kind of changed, changed our business model. New direction. So say somebody came to you and wanted a custom one made for their tank. How would you go about doing it? Can you tell us a little bit what the process is to get and make one of these um, well, in, if, in general? If, if you wanted one for custom for your tank, and we've actually done a few drawings and uh, uh, working on a few custom ones, just come to us, tell us what you're looking for. Uh, I'll send you a couple concept pieces real quick drawings of uh, actual bonsais, which is what we base a lot of our designs on, is actual bonsai structures. So I'll send you a couple pictures, and then I'll actually draw something up for you, give you a quote, and uh, then we'll build it for you. Uh, just as long as you can handle a lead time, because we're swamped, and so lead times could be three, four, six months, but you'll get a unique piece, something that's custom for you, exactly what you're looking for. Awesome. And I'm really, really excited because uh, as you guys know, I'm going to college this year, and in my dorm room, I'm downgrading to a 10-gallon nano, and I'm going to be using one of their uh, little mini bonsai trees to start kind of my own 
um, Garden of Corals. So that'll be showcased later in a lot of my videos, but thanks so much for talking to me. Thank I you, really, I really appreciate, appreciate it. it. Thank you. All the vendors this year did a really good job at having some really good raffles. A lot of people showed up to them and a lot of different people won. There were some small prizes given out, but there were also some really big and cool prizes given out. Reef to Reef, their raffle was making everybody in the entire Magna convention go nuts. They were just throwing stuff out and giving away some of the highest end products out right now. I'm here with Julian Sprung of Two Little Fishies and they came out with some really cool new products this year so he's going to explain um, just a couple of them to us. Alright, hi. Um, I was just telling you about the new pouch feeder which um, incorporates the magnetic couple devices that, that we've been uh, developing the past few years um, and uses basically a perforated pouch to, to uh, give fish a uh, way to gradually graze at either sea veggies or at um, any frozen food. You could put brine shrimp in there, you can put uh, mysis shrimp frozen, you can put any of the blended uh, frozen foods that are popular right now, really great for the fishes. And it's easy to just crack off a bit, a block, stick it in there, and you're able to magnetically couple it, put it anywhere in the aquarium. Uh, you can you can even put two of them on the same magnet, or you can have two separate ones so the fish don't fight. Um, very convenient, easy to use. We provide it with complete set with the two different magnets that you need, and we also will have available um, uh, spare replacement pouches that you can use uh, if you've already got a mag feeder or you already have a veggie mag. Uh, the same magnetic couplers on them will take the uh, pouch feeder. Well, thanks so much for talking to me. You're I know you're really busy, Julian, My so pleasure. I appreciate it. The hotel was very nice and something that was also a lot of fun to go to were all the different speakers speaking. A lot of people showed up to these. Um, they're very, very popular because of some of the speakers who are talking, and for the most part, they were very interesting, uh, covering a wide range of topics in the saltwater aquarium hobby. Hi, this is Stan from Tidal Gardens. And I'm George from Fish 12G, and uh, I'm just happy to have Dan here. We're in front of this Tidal Gardens uh, exhibitor's booth, Eric Coral. And uh, something that we both make YouTube videos, but something he's really gotten into lately is the live streaming aspect of it. And um, like he was talking about, I'm almost doing like a QVC for Coral. Uh, so if you could talk to me about that a little bit. Sure. So uh, I've heard for like years that video is the future. And in reality, it's almost getting to the point where like video is almost a past already. And the entire like market for, for so many things is transitioned to live video, especially with like even like uh, any sports things of that sort. So I kind of just got a lot of uh, inspiration from from that aspect and decided to uh, just to try like a, a live streaming thing about coral. Just kind of do a live show. So in a sense, it has kind of turned into um, almost like a QVC ish show. So what's going on? If you could tell us a little bit, anything new going on in the greenhouse and how that's going and any updates or changes and how that's come along since you first started it. Yeah, the greenhouse is always like a work in project. It's a, a work in progress, I should say. So, um, I don't know, as time goes on, sometimes like I feel like it's turning slowly into a warehouse or blocking out more sun. Um, a lot of people don't realize just like how different the sun is in the summer versus the winter and just controlling that change is very, very challenging. So we're using like more artificial lighting, we're, we're blocking out more sun all the time. So uh, we're doing stuff like that where we constantly redesign systems like almost every single year. So yeah, like as, as soon as uh, something really big happens, I'm sure to make a video about it. But we're in the process of actually breaking down two independent systems, uh, doing like a big water change system just so salt and fresh water is available uh, directly at all of our different tanks, mm -hmm. that sort of thing. So yeah, tons of projects always in the works as far as the greenhouse goes. It's very, very cool. Thank you for talking to me. I know you're super busy. Thank you so much. Thanks. I'm here with James of Cubic Aquarium, and these are some really, really eye-catching uh, tanks for jellyfish, and they're really unique to me because 
usually we're used to seeing them uh, in circular tanks, which they do also have, but this one is a cubic tank, so if you could explain kind of how that works, um, that'd be great. Okay, we've got um, filtration built into both sides here. Um, um, the flow comes through these two spray bars, which gives you a, uh, a flow which goes down the outside and up in the middle, which keeps the jellyfish suspended moving around the tank. Um, it's a pretty simple filtration system in here um, with a triple filter. Then uh, we use a Cicce pump, Cicce uh, 1.0. Um, it's about a thousand liter an hour pump. Um, you've got your LED lighting in here. Uh, remote control, which so the, allows you to... the light color is completely con controllable? Yeah, yeah, you can change the color. Um, you can put it on settings so it scrolls through different colors. Um, obviously you can turn it up and down and speed it up and things like that. Yeah, Could cool. you tell me a little bit about the different types of jellyfish you can put in the different tanks um, and just sort of the livestock that goes into these tanks? Okay, we actually have an aquaculture facility in Hong Kong where we breed, um, currently breeding about 12 different species of jellyfish. Wow. Um, one thing we're trying to do at the moment is get more different types of jellyfish on the market, um, especially in the US market where there's very, very few different species available at the moment. You normally see moon jellyfish, mm -hmm. which we've got here. Um, we've also got sea nettles over there in that tank, um, blue blubbers on display, and flame jellyfish. Uh, yeah, that's one thing we're trying to focus on at the moment, just get lots more different types of jellyfish on the market because we think that's what makes the whole jellyfish keeping a lot more exciting. Right, yeah. Could you tell me a little bit about what the maintenance routine would be for a tank like this? Okay, it's quite similar to a normal saltwater tank. Um, just giving it a wipe down once or twice a week, depending on the amount of algae that grows, will depend on how bright you have the lights on and how often you have the lights on. Uh, because it's just simple RGB lights in there, it doesn't actually create a huge amount of algae, so it's quite easy to maintain. Um, feeding the jellyfish probably twice a day. Um, and then there's a few different options for feeding them. We've got a jellyfish food here, mm -hmm. which is a powder food. So if you mix some of that up and put it in, uh, you'll get a certain amount of fallout on the bottom, um, move it around again, and the jellyfish generally pick it up and eat all the food. Um, and then, you know, your normal maintenance that you would have for a normal aquarium, cleaning the pump every few months, mm -hmm. uh, cleaning the filter sponges once a, once a week or once a fortnight. Um, it's quite simple to maintain, actually. They're, they're yeah. quite resilient animals in that um, they have a tolerance of quite a wide range of salinity and temperature, uh, much more so than fish. Um, it makes them uh, quite easy to look after in some ways. All right, thanks so much, James, for talking to me. No really problem. Appreciate it. Cool, good to be here. I'm here with Soren from Sea and Reef Aquaculture, and they have some really cool infinity display tanks here and showing off all their new types of clowns. One of the newer ones that they have, they don't even have a name for yet, and they're kind of doing like a, a poll to ask people what they think they should name it. That's how new it is. Um, and so he's going to talk a little bit about that clownfish. Yeah, sure. So we are bringing all these fish to the show. Uh, what we do, we specialize in uh, captive breeding of marine elemental fish. So all the fish that you see here are all 100% captive bred. We basically have the broodstock that produce the eggs. We take the eggs, we bring them over to a larval tank, we uh, hatch them out to larvae. We feed them specialized zooplankton and phytoplankton and give them everything they need. Um, about two to four weeks later, they metamorphose, so they change from a fish larvae into a small juvenile fish. And we take that fish and we feed it pellets and we grow it up until it's ready to sell. The, sort of the main character designer clownfish we brought uh, at this show doesn't have a name yet. And uh, we, were, we were going to call this fish the Black Da Vinci and we had this plan of taking a da Vinci, which is a, a, a orange and white fish, and make a black version of this, this fish. And we were planning to do this by several generations of breeding, by taking the black and white Darwin Ocellaris clownfish and breeding it. We did that first step and we created the uh, Mocha Vinci clownfish, which is sort of like a brown version of the da Vinci clownfish. And uh, the plan was then to take this fish and keep breeding it. But what happened was one of these Mokovinci offspring had a completely different color pattern and it turned jet black almost immediately. So we are actually asking you guys 
what we should name this fish. So we are making a contest uh, and we want you guys to tell us what you think it should be called. So please look at our website, uh, pick up the new issue of Coral Magazine, the September-October issue. There's some pictures of the fish in there. Awesome. Thanks so much, Storm, for talking to me. Really appreciate your time. I'm here with Jim from Mindstream, and they have a really cool new module um, that's a lot different than other testers. And he explained it to me that it's not so much a, a tester, but it's more of a... It's more of a, a chemical analyzer. Uh, you know, we're not a aquarium controller. What the system is, is it's a optical reading system for measuring fluorescent sensors that were adapted from the medical diagnostic field that originally would have been used to do blood analysis or urine analysis and measure parameters there, but now it's adapted to work in saltwater conditions. When the disc with the sensors on it is placed onto the reader, an RFID tag, which is located right here, contains all of the calibration information necessary to get the system up and running. So as soon as it's placed on, the monitor system will immediately go to work, it knows what the calibrations are. The unit sends via Wi-Fi from a transmitter up in the head of the, the system to your home network. From there it goes out to our, our cloud servers and provides the information to the aquarist at any time through you know, a a smart device or web interface. The unit is powered through an inductive power system, so the power supply sits on the outside of the aquarium glass and the chemical analyzer sits inside. And so the system is very easy to install and you never have any wires going into the aquarium. You know, so there's no risk of a shock or you know, any anything that for the fish to get tangled up in. So what do we get Summary, that's basically what the device is. I'm here with Judd from Carib Sea, and all of you at Tank It Easy know that in our retail showroom, we only use live aragonite sand from them. And uh, we really, really love your products, and we give it to almost all of our customers that we service. So if you could tell us a little bit about what makes it so special, um, and just about the product. Sure. Um, Aragalive comes in eight different grades. I have here on my lap a bag of our Fiji Pink. Um, it is made of naturally precipitated aragonite. Um, it's the most soluble purest form of calcium carbonate out there. Um, the eight different grades are all screened to their particular sizes. Uh, we take out all the dust from the product itself, uh, add back some seawater, and then we use our special heterotrophic bacteria mix to help to cycle the aquarium. In all, you get a very clean product. Um, it's very user-friendly, and your tank's going to be looking great in just a few hours, typically. Another thing you guys were talking to me about earlier is how you really shouldn't be siphoning your sand bed. You should let the bacteria kind of develop in there. Could you talk a little bit about that? Yeah, anytime you have a, a sand bed um, where you have different layers of bacteria, what ends up happening is um, you have heterotrophic or, or, or oxygen um, disliking bacteria that are going to help to denitrify the aquarium in the bottom layers. Um, it, when you do disturb those, you can sometimes cause a recycling type event and it can actually make uh, a, a bad situation in your aquarium where the, the tank is, is uh, spiked with ammonia or nitrite. Okay, thanks so much, Jeff. Thanks, thanks George. Appreciate All right. it. I'm here with Mark of Mecoral. It's a relatively new company and they do a lot of different things. Um, so Mark is going to explain it to me and uh, yeah. Thank you guys. Welcome, first of all, to MACNA 2015 here in beautiful Washington, D.C. First of all, I want to let you know that the real reason that Emmy Coral started was a year ago was as a licensed aquaculture facility, we were not able to get quality products, calcium and alkalinity. We went out and sourced pharmaceutical grade products intended for human consumption, not for driveway melt or pool stuff like that. People have been using this stuff. The clarity, the professionalness of the uh, the product, and it, people have gotten better results. At the end of the day, pharmaceutical grade products at about the same price as all my competitors. But what I really want to spend a minute on today is our new product. Released today here at Macna, we've got a new dip product. And many of you know the importance of dipping. Bugs is not something we want to get in our aquarium. We have a might have to tear the aquarium down just to get them all out. So please dip your corals before you get home. But if you're going to dip your corals, let's use the right dip. 
This is the mildest you're going to find on your corals. And what it's made out of is pine oil, lemon oil, and newly added is the lavender oil. The lemon oil and the pine oil is what you'll see in a Coral RX and Revive. The lavender oil, based on some research we've recently done, is actually a better oil at making bugs not be happy. So if nothing else, you don't need to buy, but spend your time doing your research on ME corals and why pharmaceuticals are important, and on the importance of having a dip that nobody else has with lavender oil, and where the price point is significantly better than everybody else. I mean, I love your guys' logo and your name. The packaging looks really, really good, and it sounds like, well, from what I've heard, that all your stuff is gonna compare a lot better than some of the stuff already out on the market. So, thanks so much for talking. Thank right. you very much. appreciate your time. Pleasure. Overall, Magna was an awesome event and something I'm going to try my best to make it to every year. Be sure to check out my other videos from Magna 2015, exclusively sponsored by Ecotech Marine. Also, subscribe to my channel.